Hello and welcome to part 2 of the touch lamp repair. Today I'm going to be replacing the triac, which I found in the previous video to be shorted out. So I bought some more replacement triacs. It is the BT136-600E triac. So I got five of them, just so I'm going to have some spares because they're probably going to be useful in the future. So I just took some soldering, desoldering wick, a uh, side cutter, and a circuit board. And the desoldering braid is a little bit um, narrow for what I'm going to use it for, but it'll be okay. I'll just have to slide it a little bit. So I'm using the Kester solder, um, 6040 lead. Pretty good stuff. I really like the how it flows when it's being melted. Let's just tin the tip a little bit. I have this weird problem in my soldering iron where the connector is a little bit dodgy and it doesn't um, doesn't heat the iron up all the way, so I have to like jiggle it a little bit. This is a Hako 808 iron, so I'll have to do I'll have to replace that connector so it doesn't do that anymore. But now I got it working, so I just tinned it a little bit. I put some flux on the points where I'm going to solder just so the solder wick will pick them up a little easier, pick up the extra solder. So like I'm putting it on the stand that I made, I 3D printed it. Um, I'll put the link where you can print it out yourself in the description. But it works pretty good, it uses a close hanger, uh, close pin, close pins as uh, clamps. So it's pretty cool. Uh, you do have to put a little bit of weight on it or else it'll tip over sometimes if you're doing a big board. That works pretty good. Just looking up the solder right now. Yeah, the solder wick I'm using is a little too small for this application. But, I don't know, it'll still work fine. Just not optimal. And I just marked the board where the wires are supposed to be so I can put it back. Can't really see it in the video too well, but there's a very faint marks on what color where the wires go. I'm using Radio Shack Flux right there, which I have been using for quite a while now. It's alright. It's I have it in a syringe, so I can easily apply it. It came in like a tub, but it was a little bit... Um, it was a little bit of a pain to get it out under the board, so I just put it into a syringe and you can easily apply it. I had to heat up the syringe before so it would flow easy, but it's a pretty easy way to apply flux. And I'm just getting rid of that solder. Pretty easy. I do have a vacuum desoldering tool, but the tips are corroded, so they can't, you know, they're unable to be used. I'll have to order more t of those tips onto the machine. But this works for the very simple board that this is, single-sided, uh, phenolic PCB. Pretty easy to do. I ran out of flux right there, so I'm just putting more on. So it flows easy onto the desoldering wick. This desoldering wick doesn't have any flux in it. Some do, which is really, really nice, but this stuff doesn't. It's just some really cheap stuff in China. So, yep, now I'm just unsticking those pins, and I think I got it out after this. Yep, you can see it just falls right out of the PCB, which is great. There's the one that's shorted. And you can see I put the solder on to the base so it doesn't tip over. And I'm just getting another one with a bag. And this one's got the leads on it and everything. It's brand new, so I'm just going to put it right back into the board and solder it. Bend it over. 
like how it was done in the factory. Kind of cheaply made, but you know, it'll work. And I'm just going to use that clamp to clamp it in onto the PCB so it isn't sticking out. And I'm just going to solder the pins. Put a little more flux on there. I mean, it just makes it easy to solder. There's flux in the solder, but I don't know, it's just for, it makes it a little bit easier. Makes it a little easier to put it on the board, too. Never, never have not enough flux onto the board. And I'm just going to touch up those pins to make sure there's any cold solder joints. There isn't. And I'm just going to cut off the extra pins on the board. Just like that. This board is just covered in flux by now. Really gross. But I'm going to remove it pretty soon. And that's that for the triac. So now all I got left is to solder in those four wires, and then I'm gonna try to turn to turn on the lamp to see if it'll work. As you can see, I'm retouching each of the pins just to make sure the solder is fully flowed onto the pins. Just make sure that there's no cold solder joints, which will be really bad in the future if it if it cracks and it disconnects the wire. It won't work anymore. And we got a fully soldered board. It's just really gross and filled with flux. So I'm going to get some isopropyl alcohol out, and it's 91%, just basic, really basic stuff right there. I got an anti-static brush, which I'm going to um, clean the board off. I'm just going to dump some on and then brush it. It works pretty good. There's really some stuck on flux on the board, which I won't want to get off so it doesn't cause any problems in the future. And then finally I'm just going to dump a whole bunch on the board and make it run off the side. That gets rid of a lot of the extra flux which is on the board, which is in solution with the isopropyl alcohol. And then I'm going to take a hot air, a hot air gun and then go over it to dry off the board. The alcohol evaporates pretty fast. I'm just making sure that there's no alcohol left over when I plug it into the wall. This ensures that it, there's none left. Usually I use a hot plate to dry off the boards, but this one really didn't stay on the board and just fell right off. So I went over and used a hot air gun instead, which works just as the same. Taking the small tip off. And I'm turning it on to 170 degrees Celsius, which ensures that none of the plastic is melted onto the board, and the solder doesn't melt either. So I'm just going to go over and dry off the board quick. I got everything re-soldered, so I'm going to put it back into the case where it came from. Now I got the case, I'm just going to snap it back in. It had electrical tape wrapped around it to keep the case together, so I'm going to do the same. Now I've got the electrical tape back on, so I'm just going to put the bottom of the lamp back together and test to see if it works. Just gonna screw back in the original light bulb which came with it. 
the incandescent light bulb. And plug it into the power strip in the back. And the lamp didn't turn on, which is a good sign, and looks like it's working. As you can see there's three brightness settings on the lamp, and then the fourth setting is to turn it off again. It does look pretty nice. So I hope you like this video. This is a successful repair of the MT1001 touch lamp controller. I will see you next episode. Bye.